Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 my latest challenge. I've been a bit busy doing things, I haven't had the time to sit down and make my workflow of this little challenge. Uh, let's have a look at the drawing first of all. We have a drawing here, you can see uh, what I like to call the diameter is 75 millimeters. That is the distance from a point here to a point here. Uh, looking at this image, this is spelled out in text but you can see the drawing it has eight sides one two three four five six seven eight so it's octagon in the hive is 80 millimeter and that is split into 11 divisions one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and there are 11 divisions that means we have 12 horizontal planes here and wall thickness 1.2 what is the volume let's have a look at my model I ended up with uh, 26,710 cubic millimeter and some decimal points. I don't care about those. Uh, these models can be done in a couple different ways. I'm going to show you a wire workflow and uh, as a slightly parametric workflow. We can change some dimension, not all of them, because the model will crash. We cannot change the number of sides. We cannot change the number of uh, levels, if you want to call that, the horizontal divisions. Looking from front, the horizontal division is how this will work out. Uh, but we can change some of the hive width or diameter and also a twist slightly without breaking the model. And a uh, small thing, uh, all the faces here are triangular faces and they should be flat. If you want to check that a face is flat in Fusion, you simply right click it and look if you can create a sketch. If you can create a sketch on a face, it's a flat face. Fusion can only sketch on flat planes and flat faces. With that said, let's start a new design. Of course, start by saving. I will not do that. I'm just showing you the workflow. But normally, always start by saving. Create a component. If you're going to use this in something else, this is a one-off thing. You don't need to create a component. It's recommended to do it. I will just show the workflow. So let's start creating a sketch from on this plane. You can see it didn't switch over to show me this for correct direction because I have 3D sketching on. I will use that later. I will for now turn that off and tell Fusion to look at the sketch plane like this. I want to look at it from the top. I will do in a circle. And the diameter we had was 75. Let's have a look at the drawing. The second thing we can see is one of the points are straight towards us. So you can see this is straight towards us. And we just split up like that. So we're going to do where well. I'm going to do a line from here. Look, we get the horizontal constraint automatically. And then we can do one more line like that. And then we take this dimension, turn slide out of the way. We're going to dimension this. This is going to be one segment. So that's 360 divided by eight. That's of course is 45. So by that, we have done everything we need to sketch on looking from the top. Uh, but we will change one thing. I will go back <coughs> and edit sketch and we'll name this one. I'm going to go back and tell Infusion I call this diameter 75. Makes it easier to go back and change it later. I'm going to finish sketch, create a new sketch. I'm going to slightly turn around the model. I will look in from the front. So you can do a sketch from the front with one single line straight up like that. And that is going to be half. And that was 80. And let's open up our sketch here. We have two fully defined sketches. We can finish sketch. We can also have a look in our parameters. But we have two favorite diameters now, diameter and hive. So we can go in and change them later. And we will start doing some features. Can pop over to the surface. I'm going to do most of the things I'm doing in surfaces. So we can use the menus up here. Going to start with the sweep. I'm going to sweep. The profile is going to be these two. The path is going to be this one here. And here now you need to do a twist angle. Let's have a look at the drawing. We can see that this point, let's focus on one point. This point here starts here, twists over and ends at the perpendicular to the side. We can see it also here. I would have not put, pointed that out in the drawing. Because in most cases, so people just show you a strange image like this. You have to pay attention what's in the images sometimes. So in this case, there's a 90 degree twist. So we're going to pop in twist equals 90. And we see, of course, this is going in the wrong direction. I want it to twist to the left. Let's have a look at the drawing again. It's twisting to the left, not to the right. So we're going to do 
minus 90 like that and hit OK. Gonna open up our boss, have a look. We have one single surface boss so far. Nicely like that. Now we're gonna do flat planes. I'm gonna use patch for that. Just like this. Gonna hit OK. We have one more body. Yes. Yes, it's for search or design shortcuts. I prefer to think it of a search button. And we're gonna do a rectangular pattern. We're gonna do a pattern of bodies. Yes, this body here. Direction is gonna be the line straight pattern here. We're gonna use extent. And what is the extent? Yes, uh, of course, it's been the same as the hive. That's one reason I used, uh, I named the hive to uh, an 80 millimeter measure to hive is that I would use it twice in the design. Now I can simply start typing in Hive. You can see it picks up from one of the sketches, like that, and we have that. So if we change the dimension, this should also change. We're gonna try that later. Uh, quantity, as I said, uh, we're gonna be our 11 divisions. This is divided in 11 parts. That means there needs to be 12 horizontal planes. So this is gonna be doo -doo -doo, 12, and I hit okay. And we have a bunch of surface bodies. Uh, this is my preferred method. I'm going to do a trim. I'm going to use the first body we created and trim away all the outside parts. You can do it, of course, it's the other way around. Trim the inside because what I'm looking for, I'm going to hit OK, are the points out here which I get now. Uh, this twisted body has done its work, so I'm going to highlight it, right click, and select Remove. Do not delete, remove. I have auto hide turn off on my sketches. So I'm now going to hide these sketches so I don't get confused. And we have now something we can use to do a 3D sketch. Create sketch from the top. Let's do it from top. It's not that important. Turn on 3D sketching and turn around the body so we can have a look at things. And we're going to do some lines. And because I have 3D sketching now on, it will pick up points in 3D space. So I can start by going from here. I'm going to start by doing one of the outlines. I'm going to do it like this. Now nice and easily. I'm going to talk about, there's one more way of doing it. Uh, I'm now directly using the bodies as reference. Coming up here, I'm going to straight over and then I'm going down the other side. Let's go all the way around. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, and straight over like that. I now made that pocket. Hi, the boss have a check. Yes, I was down that per minute. So see, we have no profile because there are no flat parts of this. This is a 3D sketch now with twisted body basically. And there are no flat planes, so we can't do any useful flat planes so far. So we're gonna add those. We have a look at our design again. We can see that we have this twist to the left and the long twist is going to the right. So we're now going to create these lines here. <coughs> and what I want to point out, if you don't want to use bodies, there's also the possibility in Project Include to include 3D geometry. And with that, you can include any geometry you want. I simply just picked up the points from things here. You know, I don't want line out there. So let's now do the crossing lines here. So go to line, L again with keyboard. So the twist is to the left, so these lines need to go from left to right. And then it goes straight over. I go from here, I go up, and then I go straight over. Oops, that's wrong. That did not hit the point I wanted. Let's do that again. Control Z to undo, because fusion, 3D sketching can be, you can see it's picking up something behind here, so let's turn around, it's picking up the point behind. Sometimes you need to be a bit careful with 3D sketching because you can pick up geometry you don't want. I'm still working my way up, step by step. Like this, sorry, wrong way. Uh, from here, going from bottom up to top right, then straight over, bottom to top right, straight over, bottom to top right, and straight over, still moving upwards. And of course, all the faces we are creating here now are triangular faces. And you can see we start to get some faint blue parts here. We are now creating profiles because we are making flat faces. And Fusion recognizes that as profiles. 
And now we done all of them. Let's hide the bodies to have a look. Yes, we are all of them. We're going to finish sketch. I now have used these bodies for what I need them to. So I want to remove these. I'm going to click up here, hold down shift and select the bottom one that highlights all of them. You can do Windows select one, do that. Right click and once again, select remove. Now this creates a bunch of remove commands in the timeline and to make things a bit easier to see, I'm going to highlight this, hold down, highlight the one to the left and right click and tell Fusion to create a group. This bunches things together and makes it a bit easier to see the timeline. And of course, get back to patches. We patches works on flat surfaces and we can select each other, but basically here we what, what we want to select are the faces. So we just gonna select the faces up here. And uh, I know there are some other workflows to do this. This is just one I like to do because it's uh, easy to make stable. I've done all the patches. We got a bunch of bodies. Oh, sorry. Uh, I want to do select selection filter. I want to do window selection. I happen to tap some key here. I'm gonna make mark all of them until Fusion wants to stitch them. So I have one single surface body, S on the keyboard, circular pattern, I'm gonna pattern bodies, this body's axis, of course our little uh, Z axis here. And I'm gonna do eight of those. Let Fusion think, I'm gonna hide the sketch now. Once again, window select all of it, stitch it together, create a patch for the top, simply hit enter if it's correct, patch, the bottom edges, because I stitch them, Fusion see this as one a continuous edge. We have three bodies, let's see if we can mark them all. Oh no, let's do it like this. Hold down control and select all our bodies and once again stitch and we will end up with a solid body. And now, yes again, let's find our shell command. We're going to use for, use for solid shell command and that's the blue one, so that's that one. Top here and the wall thickness was, let's check our once again, was 1.2, 1.2 and hit enter. And we now have our little design. Let's check once again, what's the properties? Did I make this correctly? Properties, 26,710 once again. So we have a basic model and this has the possibility, this can crash now. Uh, we have some parameters here. So if we don't change the dimensions too violently, we can normally say, okay, I want the hive to be 100 millimeters and our model should update. Yes, it was a bit, maybe a bit wider, 80 millimeters. And maybe I think the twists is a bit boring. Remember, it's a bit hard to change the direction of a twist that will break the model because Fusion will not be able to trim correctly. Where we do the trim, trimming off the um, surface body that was outside the twist, but we can like do minus 75. See. Oh, no, it failed. It sometimes fails because it creates new bodies and that is known to Fusion to crash things. So the patch fails here, so I will do a control Z to undo that. Get out of a parameter and control Z back. So this is not fully parametric. It's sometimes worth changing things, but Fusion is a bit annoying that it names all bodies and uh, can't do this. Use the API in Fusion, which would most probably be able to write a program to make a bottle of this fully repetitive and parametric and use if you're going to make it in redesign. But if you need a one-off and you have some idea of, uh, sorry, uh, the basic dimension, this is a possible workflow to decipher a shape like this and create a model and then go for 3D printing or whatever you want to do with it. With that said, take care, see you around and goodbye.